Hello everyone and welcome to a number 37 in our live streams challenge 66 days of data with NIME where I, Phil Kowalski, a non-programmer, a no-coder, bring you from zero to hero in data analytics, data science and the NIME analytics platform within only 66 days. And we are in the second half, we are on day number 37 and today we are going to start our very first multivariate analysis. So an analysis between two more features of a data set. We're going to talk about scatter plots. I show you what I have created. And before we do that, I just want to give a quick shout out. So you always can find my workflows that I created here on this address, on this address here hub.nime.com slash Kovisoft. You get them for free. You don't have to do anything. Just drag and drop them into your Nime Analytics platform. There you will find a folder that's called public space. And within that, the 66 days of data subfolder. And there you'll find all the things I've created for free if you want to follow along. By the way, while we're talking about for free, make sure to subscribe and follow um, because that helps me not only to create more of these videos and that keeps me motivated, but even more important, it helps others. And because the algorithm will suggest these videos to more people. With that aside, let's just quickly head over to Nime. So let's just switch to the screen and see what I've built. But first, let's have a look at today's task. All right, so here we are at data exploration in 66 days of data with NIME, the site you probably already know. And we are in section number seven, plots and charts, multivariate analysis. So today's task is the scatter plot. Yesterday we talked about sampling and we had a look about how the, um, the track popularity class are shared if we use different sampling methods. Today, we are going to talk about scatter plots. So let's just quickly have a look at what we see here. The scatter plot is probably the most common way to visualize and investigate relationships among pairs of features. So that's important, pairs of features. Let's learn more about scatter plots, how to implement them in NIME, and how to carry out a visual exploration of the data. So check various pairs of features. Which feature creates a pattern with which feature? Try loudness versus explicit and see if there is some form of correlation. I can tell you that's not a very good example and I show you why and maybe that's why it's there. Also add a table view to visualize details of selected points only in the scatter plot. So definitely have a look at these two articles here. One is a guide to scatter plots that you will find on Chartio and it's it's a general information and also when you should use a scatter plot very good and also have a look at this video on YouTube from Nime TV but let's quickly head over to Nime so first I show you what I have created and then I'll show you how I created it so this is our dashboard and basically what we have here are rows of data, our sample, we have 62,000 and maybe we bring that down a little bit because it seems to be quite a lot. But you can see here that we have a scatter plot from these items. So it's a very boring scatter plot and I'll tell you why. If you see the features that we, that we compare loudness versus explicit, that is one of the examples that does not make sense. And probably that's why it's in the task, because explicit is a yes, no, it's a Boolean value. It's either, either a song is explicit or it's not. Um, and hence you only have values like zero and one here. So that's kind of a scatter plot that does not make so much sense. But let me show you basically how I created this. Let's quickly discard this. If you remember, we ended here yesterday. If I open up that component, I have it open here. So this is the table view basically that we have done yesterday where we looked at the track popularity class. 
and see the shares uh, for low, medium, high. Also for the random share, the stratified share and the original share. And we saw that they're pretty close together. All right. So the one thing I did basically is I right clicked here. Compo mm, no, that's not what I want. Right click component, set up and I added a table outport which not only gives it that little gives our component that little black triangle but within that that output node here that gray output node gets an input node so we can basically channel our data here one thing that we have seen from loading the dashboard is that it takes quite a bit of time so i probably might change the sample instead of doing 20 percent of 300,000, which is 60,000 rows Probably we just do something like 2,500 rows. Or maybe, maybe we make it 3,000, right? It's probably 1%. So let's just do this. First of all, we re execute the node, execute and open views. Probably the shares, oh, look, there's a different share now for the stratified sample and a, that's interesting. It ch changed a little bit, but only a little bit. But nevertheless, we now have our 2,500 or 3,000 rows here available at the output port. And with that, we create a few more nodes. So the first thing that I did is I renamed some columns. There were some duplicate columns from way back when we tucked in the other CSV files. So we had an artist's file, a name file that it was a little bit confusing. Name, name what? We had a second popularity column, so I just renamed them. So artists right becomes the artist name, name becomes song name, and popularity right is basically the artist popularity. All right, so let's execute this one. Then we want to reapply the colors to low, medium, high. I want to keep them. It's not explicitly written in the task, but I want to keep it. So we have that one. And here we have our table view, right? I also do not show all values in the table because from my point of view, the artist ID or the split results list or the time signature, these are features that do not make sense to see in the table. They do not give meaning. But things like, is it explicit? What was the release date? What is the danceability? And so on. What is the energy? What is the key? That seems to make sense. So I gave it the title of Spotify Data Stratified Sample. And maybe let's just change that to 2,500 rows. Or maybe we keep this, we skip this as all well because you can see it from the table um, itself at the end of the day. And we also don't want to display the row keys because they do not make sense at all. All right, that's the one thing. And on the other hand, and that's the core of this one here, probably is the scatter plot. So right now we have a comparison between loudness and explicit. You see that that doesn't make sense. What I maybe want to compare is, maybe we compare, what about danceability and energy? I would assume these probably make a little bit more sense. One thing you never have to forget here, if you're using a uh, scatter plot, is we have changed the axis. We manually have to change the axis labels as well. So that is danceability and this becomes energy otherwise you would have the wrong labels and that might be very confusing to and even send the wrong message to your audience all right now that we have that let's get back here and let's have a look at our dashboard so right now and maybe i also change the dashboard layout a little bit. I don't like so much that they are beneath each other. So maybe we try to make them alongside each other. And so let's get rid of this one. All right, let's see if that works better. Right click, interactive view, multivariate analysis. All right, well, 
still does not look very good, but we now can basically see. So now we don't see anything because we have not selected anything here. All right, so let's just select these and we see these points appear. Um, but that's also probably not what we want. So let's have another look into the scatter plot node. Um, so let's just see the options, general plot options. Um, we basically want to connect the table to the table view to the um, scatter plot. And what I have done is I have said show selected rows only. Maybe we just do it differently. And I'm not sure if I have to set something up here. So interactivity, I guess we have to publish potentially um, we potentially have to set it up here. But I don't see it to be quite honest. Because what I want to do is I want to see all scatters, but I maybe want to we maybe want to have um yeah, let's just see. <coughs> hmm. Interesting. Now these points get bigger. Maybe we do it differently. Maybe in the scatter plot, we only show, let's say, 100 points and see if that makes more sense. General plot options. Can we limit the number of points we see? Oh, yeah, maximum number of rows. Let's just put it to, well, we have 3,000. Let's make it 10% of that. 300. And let's see how that looks. Interesting. Interesting. So this is the densibility, higher densibility, but it's it's very much throughout the whole space here, right? Which in return means for me, I'm not so 100% sure if um, there is a clear, there is a relation, but it's not like um, super densible songs. Or maybe is it? Let's just see. We have songs that are very danceable, but they have a medium, mediocre, mediocre energy. We see that the energy, or if for the, we have also quite a few points with high energy that do not have a high danceability. So I would dare to say there is no high danceability equals high energy relationship here. One thing we could do though is we could, for example, now select a few points and now we see them marked here, right? So if we just, can we just see if we find songs from Queen? All right, let's just see, where are they? Let's just, let's just take these ones. My Fairy King, Somebody to Love, now I'm here, Radio Gaga, awesome songs, guys. Awesome songs, I can tell you. That's interesting. Let's have, you know what? You know what? I want to have a look, especially at Now I'm Here and Somebody to Love, because, uh, you, yeah, that's what I thought. They have high energy, right? And they are not so much danceable. If you know these songs, they're not, depends a little bit on how you define dancing, but they have a high energy but they are not so danceable. Interesting, really interesting. Let's compare it to other features, shall we? Okay, and if you can, listen. Listen especially to these old Queen albums. They are fantastic. So what else can we compare? So for the x-axis, what do we want to have? What about, hmm, tempo? versus what can we compare to tempo tempo to energy what about tempo to energy let's see how that works out that's not what i want all right
you know what is also quite interesting basically besides the factors and i made the mistake i wanted to avoid um which i just to just said we said x axis tempo y axis um we need to relabel this i wanted what i wanted to show you guys here is also if you look at this we have a third feature in here and you know which one that is that is the track popularity identified by the color so for the low track popularity there is well, the energy is low and the tempo is also low but for the ones that are uh, like like really really high um we have like look high tempo pretty high energy it would be interesting to see what what uh, song this is Can we see that? Show only selected. Ah, unfortunately, I cannot see it. That would be good if we have to, um, basically um, a back connection to see just this. All right, so this is basically how you do a scatter plot. And once again, I upload this to the NIME Hub. This is all a bit experimental, right? These are not crisp and crystal clear tutorials that I'm doing here, but I'm finding my way through these tasks every single day for the remaining 29 days, I guess, um, together with you guys. So if that's stuff you like, if you want to see more of it, make sure to hit like and subscribe. If you have a question, just leave a comment. I'm pretty sure we find a response to that. Other than that, I'm just left with saying goodbye and bye-bye. See you tomorrow in 66 days of data with Nime.